Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Rodian Montague and welcome to the channel. This episode, I'm going to be bottoming out the footings. I'm also going to explain briefly what a building inspector does. And last of all, we're going to be setting out some datums and I'm going to show you exactly how that's done with an optical level. So without further ado, let's jump straight into that video. Hey, trying to clear out these footings here. So we're down in the hole. We're bottoming out the uh, footings, ready for the building inspector to come and have a look. Come down and have a look. There you go, that's what it looks like before you do anything. I don't mind a little bit of digging, so let's jump right into it. That is the one that I've just done, bottomed out, it looks nice, flat, even. If I quickly switch around here, you can see it through there. It is just a mess. And this here is all soft. It's soft, look. So you don't really want to put a ton of concrete on there because it'll compact it and move. This here is hard, nicely bottomed out. And that's what the building inspector will be looking for. Keep, just keep going around, that's the first one. I like having nice crisp so you've got no worries whatsoever. So when that concrete does go in there, it goes in there level, flat, nice, square. Yeah, just, just a bit of perfection in there. So that's why it's nice and flat. If anyone out there is thinking about having an extension done or something like that, or a house or built like that, just pay careful attention to every detail, but don't be surprised if you spend thousands and thousands of pounds on concrete in the floor that you are never going to see. There's a hell of a lot of stuff when it comes to building that you will never see that are most likely the most expensive parts. And the footings are here specifically to hold your house up, hold your extension up, stop it from sinking into the ground. Uh, uh, building inspector's just been, he's checked all the holes, checked everything, he's happy, <coughs> which is good. So yeah, that's, that's that bit done. First stage is completed. Now I've got to do is finish bottoming uh, these last couple of trenches out, get looking at concrete, how much concrete is going to come into it. I know how to work out area and volume and it's something I, I'm quite good at really, but bloody hell, on this scale is quite a lot of area to work out, like the volume of how much concrete to go in. But as I said to you before, we need to get the datum level set. I explained to you yesterday what the datum level is. I'll go through it in more detail today because we're going to look at doing that. So but first off, Last bit of digging. Right, while I'm sitting here having a quick break from work digging, quickly explain what a building inspector does. Why, he's, why he has to come here. The whole point of a building inspector is to check at certain stages of the build to make sure you are doing the builder is doing the job correctly and the project at the end will be safe and it will uh, coincide with all the guidelines that the government put out that say you have to do it he comes over at certain stages i'll explain the stages each time he comes over six six times maybe six or seven times depending on the job and um he just has a look around make sure that as we've seen here, he makes sure that the footings are deep enough, that the bottom of the footings have been bottomed out correctly, that the bottom of the footings are solid enough, they're not uh, gooey and gunky and just squishy. And so he comes out, he checks and makes sure that it's all okay, it's all safe and it's up to the, uh, the minimum standard. That is the purpose of the building inspector, just to make sure everything's safe and done, done by the book. If I'm not going into enough detail about anything, then just put it down in the comments and let me know. And so in future I can be more informative because I want that's the whole reason why I'm doing this I want you guys to hopefully learn something now we're back I've skipped today I've dug all the footings out I'll show you what they look like from up here because uh, you haven't seen them from up here yet fully finished so here we go lovely bit of Minecraft going on there plenty plenty of trenches going around all lovely nice and square so we're done with the trenches and now we're gonna get on to doing the datum points I'll show you what, um, what tools you use to get it done and then obviously I'll go through it and show you how I do it as I do it as we go along. So first off, I'll show you the, uh, the bits that we need. First thing, this 
is an optical level. In the box is the main part, looks like this. Get a little, little look at that. That's, that's the camera part of it. Tripod for it to sit on. Goes on the top of that. This is the measuring stick or the large ruler. It's got one set of measurements on one side, which I don't even think I've used these particular ones. They, they go up in a 10 millimeter increment. So white sections, 10 mil, black sections, 10 mil, white, all these squares, each one's 10 mil. Flip it over, it's something a bit more everyone is probably used to, the ruler style. 10 mil increments as you can see it's exactly like a tape measure Here, there you go each line is one millimeter and then you got five mils between this one and this one and then 10 mils between this and this obviously one two three four five forty five so that's um 400 410 20 30 40 50 450 and then it just goes up and up and up and up and up so this is the side that we'll be using because you can get it to as i said uh oh, bloody camera as i can get it to bang on the millimeter or half millimeter so I want it as precise as possible so we're going to use this side but as you can also see on this side it does also have the 10 mil increments as well and 50 mil sections there so this side is the best one because you get the best of both worlds this is just like I said I've never used it I don't even think I've used it once this is the side you want those are the tools we're going to be using now so I'm just going to get the first point the first date and point set up and then I'll explain how everything works what datum is how datums are used Thing. So I'm going to go and set this up and then I'll come back to you in a second. Once you've got the top bit screwed on, the next part is to level it so it's perfectly level. If you can see in here, we have got a little mirror. There is a little bubble and that bubble has to be in that circle. So what you do is you use these here. This adjusts the height of the three points where you twist it around, so you twist it around. So you've got to move it around so that that bubble rests in the middle of that circle. Difficult doing it while looking for a camera, that's for sure. There we go, that is where it's supposed to be. Okay, so once you've got it there, once you've got it there, you, you twist it to three points. So you twist it to here, and then you twist it to here. I like to twist it where the, where the little knobs are here. And as you'll see, it will probably move a little bit. Yeah, it's moved a fraction, but not too much. So let's put it back to the first one. That is pretty damn good. And then we'll move it to this one and see how it looks. I'll tell you what, they're all inside the circle, that's good. That is telling me that pretty much wherever that points is gonna be level. This is exactly what we want. So now, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take the measuring stick all the way over there to where the, the driveway comes in. There's a drop curb there. One of the points on the, on the plans, which I'll show you in a second, shows that, that there is a, a surveyor's point. Loads of measurements all the way around, as I showed before, been taken by a surveyor previous before any, any of this work was ever done, when the planning was in, in the planning stages, he's taken loads of measurements to the heights, and those measurements, one of them is on that drop curb, which we need to use that as a first point. Take that point, measure it over here. I'll put a peg in the ground, one of these pegs, one of these pegs, I'll put that in the ground. So I'll take the point from over there, bring it over here, and from this point, from the dimensions on the map, the measurements on the map, I can Make another peg which I'll put closer to the footings and that will be the height of height of slab and then I'll take that into the footings and start spraying some lines around for where the height of the concrete is going to go so I'm going to go and set the peg up um, the ruler staff over there and then I'll get back to you all right so you might be able to see just there I've set up the ruler standing up so I'm going to look through here 
and I'm going to see, I get it in focus. Oh. Yeah, I'll look through there straight at it, find out what the measurement is, and then bring that measurement. Probably, I'll probably have the measurement round there somewhere, just at the base of the wave rock, just round there somewhere. So let me focus it up in there, and then I'll see if I can let you have a look. So that is what it looks like through the camera. I've had to do it on my phone because my camera won't pick it up. You can't really see the numbers. It's a little bit further away than I'm used to. You can't quite see the numbers, but I've worked it out at 1394 millimeters. But that's what the reticle looks like. There you go, let's see if I can get it a bit better. There you go, that's much better. Yeah, it's one three. It's just a bit above 139. 1394, as far as I can tell. I can just see the five lines, so it's just below that. In between 139 and 1395. So that, yeah, that's the reticle. I'm not exactly sure what the bit on the right does, the triangle. Never used it, just always used the line. But yeah, that's that's an idea of what I'm looking at. See what I mean? Battlefield sniper kind of thing. I'm going to get that measurement and bring it over to Wave Rock. And then hopefully I can show you closer up because it's a bit closer than that is. This is the contraption I've set up to hold it. Normally you'd have another man here who would grab this stick and be holding the stick. It'd be over there, it'd be over here, it'd be, it'd be wherever you tend to be. And just hold it. It'd be a lot easier because you could shout out down 5mm, down 10mm. It'd come along it would whack that down and it'd be a lot quicker but because it's me on my own I've had to make do with a trestle that's what the stick looks like close up you can see let me just adjust it slightly you can see the reticle there that's better you can see it on the mark there it currently is one six four uh, five six one six four seven so there you go that's what it looks like now I'm going to put a peg in there and get it out of the right height. Right, so at this point when you start whacking this peg here, you need to do it ever so slightly, a little bit at a time, because you want to go a few mil at a time, so just two whacks, then you go back to the camera. I'm going to keep calling it a camera. Um, so you go back to the camera, have another check, <clears throat> come back, give it a few more whacks, just go little by little by little, because you want it exactly in the right spot, so that you can always have it here, because this saves you going all over there doing all this all over again so this will be here for a while hopefully it will probably probably be here until the the floor goes in It'll be a main datum but anyway enough of that let's get uh get tapping so here we go some very light little taps just to get it down that that few mil so i reckon i reckon that's probably got it you know well i'm very happy with that that is exactly where i wanted it one three nine three Kind of in between three and four, like the half mil, but I'm, I'm super happy with that. I can live with half a millimeter. So that there is exactly where I wanted it. Good job. So this peg here is exactly the same as the drop curb all the way over there. I can use this as a reference point now to go to wherever I need to go and set out some uh, pegs and some dating points. So I'm going to take a look at the drawings and get the next uh, next level, set up another datum. Excuse me having it on my phone, I don't actually have it printed out yet. So you can see here, that number there, datum line, says exactly here, drop curb 51.87 I believe, local datum 00. So that has been reset from that to zero. That is the point we took from the, um, from the drop curb outside and we had the camera set up just over here and I've put our datum around here. So the top of slab level, which is will be the top of the, not the finished floor, because obviously you can see that above, as I said before, FFL, finish, finish floor level. So we need to take a datum, another peg, 675 millimeters below the one that we've just put in. And that will give us the top of the slab level which I will be able to work down from that to how high the footings need to be filled up with concrete. So we'll set that one up, the 675 millimeters below local datum, another peg, put it as close to the footings as we can get, and go from there. So I'm gonna go and set that up and get that going. Okay, so from this point, we take beam size, which is 150 millimeters, and then we take a block size, which is 225 millimeters. That 225 millimeters is including a 10 millimeter mortar bed on the bottom. And then on top of that, we'll sit the beam. So we have from here, we'll go down 150 millimeters and then add on that 225 millimeters. So from that level point down, we go down 375 millimeters. That is the top of our concrete. Okay, 
Right, so I'll jump in the trench, get a can of spray paint, get the tape measure, get this all leveled up, and then uh, make our first spray point. So I'm down here in my hole. Pencil, spray paint, tape measure. As you can see, I've set up a bit of sand around here. Make sure that the level's level. So then once you make sure it's level, take your tape, pencil. I know you're not gonna actually write on the sand, but it's a nice mark. So, I like to press the button down so it doesn't move. You take it to the underside of that, which will be, remember, the top of the beam, the, the top of the slab. Measure down 375 millimeters, and you make a mark where that is, like that. And then there is the top of the concrete. Spray can. Just give it one little blast, like so. And there we go. That is the top of our concrete. This is a picture of me pointing at the, the line that I just sprayed on, on the sand. This is the datum line that I've just measured down. Unfortunately, I lost all the footage of me going around and spraying the rest of the footings. So if you check this picture out here, I'm stood in front of all these blue lines. These are the blue lines I went around and sprayed for when the concrete comes so I don't overfill it by accident. I know exactly where the concrete comes to, so I fill it up to that line and then we're good to go. I think this will do us for the day, for the week, for the episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Hope you guys have learned a few things. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want me to uh, elaborate on, anything else you want to see in more detail. That's the end of it for this week. Hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you next week.